Contrary to popular opinion, rifles weren't an uncommon sight on European battlefields, and some of the Hessian units that the Continental Army faced during the Revolutionary War had rifles of their own. Rifling technology first appeared in what is now Germany as early as the 1480s, and rifles had been introduced to the British colonists by German immigrants to North America in the 18th century. Whereas the barrel of the most common firearm of the era, the musket, was smooth on the inside, the inside of a rifle's barrel featured a spiraled groove down its length that was created by boring a hole down a solid length of iron with special tools. This made the weapon more accurate by spinning the bullet along its axis as it traveled down the barrel, which kept it from wobbling from side to side and veering off in either direction. It's the same reason that a quarterback tries to put a spin on a football when they throw it. So, if this ball is a bullet, my fingers represent the grooves in a rifle barrel, and when I flick my wrist to throw, it does the same thing to the football that a rifle does to a bullet when it fires. When a football spins, it has a better likelihood of landing in the arms of a waiting receiver, in the same way that a bullet has a better likelihood of hitting its target when it spins out of a rifle barrel. Rifling also ensured that the bullet traveled a bit longer in distance than one fired from a musket. Muskets had a maximum range of about 300 yards, but were typically fired at ranges of 100 to 200 yards or even closer. A rifle had a similar range, but its user might be able to actually hit their intended target at that distance and have a reasonable expectation that the bullet would travel a bit farther if they didn't. On top of that, the rifles used in the colonies, known as the Pennsylvania or Kentucky Long Rifle, had a slightly longer barrel than those used by Europeans. The standard issue musket in the British Army, also known as a brown bass for its brown wooden stock, had a barrel length of about 42 to 46 inches. The barrels of the rifles used by Hessian units, known as Jaeger rifles, were about 30 inches long. The colonial long rifle, on the other hand, could extend up to 48 inches or even longer in some cases. That meant that Edward Haymond and the rest of Daniel Morgan's riflemen in the Continental Army could fire just a little bit farther and hit their targets just a little bit more often than their British or Hessian counterparts. There were drawbacks, however. Back then, guns were muzzle-loaded, meaning that bullets were loaded from the top of the barrel and then pushed down with a metal pole called a ramrod. Because of the grooves in the barrel, it was harder to push a bullet down a rifle to load it than it was to push one down a musket. On a parade ground, a well-trained infantryman armed with a musket could load and fire his weapon four to five times a minute, maybe even six. A rifleman could average, if he was well-practiced, maybe half that. Soldiers armed with muskets could also maximize their rate of fire with a method known as tap loading, where they would drop the bullet down the mouth of the barrel and then tap the butt of their gun on the ground to get the bullet to go all the way down. That was something that, again, because of the grooves in the barrel, riflemen couldn't do. Now, the rate of fire on a battlefield was an entirely different story. Battlefields were chaotic places, filled with smoke that obscured soldiers' vision and loud noises that made it harder to hear and concentrate. With their senses deadened and their adrenaline pumping, most soldiers with muskets could fire an average of one to two times a minute on the battlefield. As you can imagine, that meant that rifles fired even less frequently. By far the biggest problem with a rifle on the battlefield, however, was that it couldn't support the use of a bayonet. Bayonets were a triangular blade, about 15 inches in length, that slid over the barrel of a musket and locked into place. They did that with the use of a socket on the end of the bayonet with two slits in it at a right angle. The first slit went in the direction of the barrel and allowed the socket to slide over the gun's sight. The second was perpendicular to the barrel, so that when a soldier twisted the bayonet, the sight would be wedged in place in the corner of the slit. This effectively turned a musket into a spear for hand-to-hand -hand combat, while allowing its user to continue firing the weapon if necessary. Bayonet use was far less frequent during the era than many have assumed, and was primarily used in surprise attacks and against defended positions, which is generally when it was seen during the Revolutionary War. But, because they were so poorly supplied, Continental Army soldiers often didn't have bayonets at all, and the British Army used that fact to its advantage on a number of occasions. The threat of facing a line of soldiers armed with 15-inch blades when they didn't have one themselves was enough to make some rebel troops flee the battlefield altogether. Riflemen had it even worse. They couldn't count on the possibility of using a bayonet to defend themselves even if they were lucky enough to get their hands on one. 
The barrel of their gun was so long that if they had tried to use a bayonet on it, there was a better than even chance it would just break. So, on top of firing more slowly than a soldier with a musket, riflemen were also less effective in close combat. Edward Heyman and the rest of Morgan's riflemen would have to deal with that and every other disadvantage their weapons offered in the Battle of Saratoga. But, fortunately for them, their opponents in turn had to deal with all of the long rifle's advantages as well.